Okay, Hold question. On. Go. Anyone? Yeah. Did you write this screenplay? No, I didn't. This is actually, um, <clears throat> it's an adaptation of a stage play, which um, was written by Ken Urban, who is uh, a friend of mine. And, um, and the play was very different. <laughs> it was a musical. And, wow. and, and it was actually an ensemble piece. So it was like a seven character ensemble piece. And so I, I was very hands on in terms of um, the direction that the screenplay took and you know, the things that I was the most interested in. Um, <clears throat> so you know, there was a lot of collaboration, but Ken did the adaptation. And, um, you know, and I, I definitely was much more interested in the two central couples and you know, decided to kind of pull them out as the principal characters. And um, I was just thinking about the, the breakout in song moments that happened on stage that, that um, you know, there was one that was actually left in, in the script. And, I, and, and it was one of those things where I was like, OK, we're going to try it and see what happens. And then as soon as I saw it, I was like, Eef. A Yeah. In this movie? Yes. So. Um, and I can, I can point it out to you. Um, it's when Mandy um, comes back after having the, uh, the phone conversation with her brother. And she says, you know, is kind of mumbling against the, the subway wall. And she's saying, happy Kwanzaa, happy Kwanzaa. Like, that was a whole kind of song moment. Wow. And that, we did two takes of that. And the first take was literally Maria just going for it <laughs> and like just being like, happy Kwanzaa, you know, very like showy and, um, and, and it being a musical moment, you know, that was kind of a remnant of the stage play. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, okay, let's try something else. <laughs> and, um, and literally we, you know, we had two takes of it and, and so, the other idea was to, to sort of have it be completely internal and um, you know, much more about these kind of reverberating voices in her head and, and not about performing for anyone. And, and so it just was a very different, different take on it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it, so it was an adaptation of a stage play. And, um, um, and I, I actually have these handouts, which I don't know if I have enough. I, Okay, so I have like 20 handouts, which I'll just give out. And you know, a, lo a lot of what was interesting with me, for me about this process was um, how different it was from my first feature, which I had written, and which I had kind of labored over the screenplay for many, many years. And so for me, it was an interesting process to um, direct something that I had not written, but that I felt emotionally connected to, and that I felt was personal subject matter that I knew a lot about and I felt like um, the characters were very close to me and they felt like you know friends of mine or people that I knew um, that were very much part of a community that I felt a part of um, and so <clears throat> it was interesting um, you know collaborating more with the actors having it be um, a completely contemporary piece because my first feature um, Brother to Brother dealt with the Harlem Renaissance and about 40% of that took place during the Harlem Renaissance. And so, um, so it was a, just a much, it was a, it's a very, very different production model in that so much of it is kind of historically based that um, you want to kind of stay true to the period, or at least I did, and that was kind of my MO going in of really kind of trying to capture um, the authenticity of people's lives during that time period. And, um, and so this um, was, you know, contemporary and colloquial, and I could actually collaborate more with the actors. And so I would say uh, probably like 20% of it ended up being improvised. And so um, on the handouts, there are just some, some different kinds of improvi improvisations that we would do, which would, you know, happen in rehearsal and then also happen during the shoot. And so the whole, um, the whole film was actually shot with two cameras. And so, um, <clears throat> um, so you know, with, with Brother to Brother, I was, I was much more, it was one camera and I was much more meticulous about every aspect of framing. And, and with this, it was literally, you know, two cameras 
and you know, one monitor the size of an iPhone. And so like I was just kind of like, all right, you know what? Like I'm actually going to be in the scene with the actors and I'm just going to have to let some stuff go because I don't have all of the gear that I had on the first film and, and it's just it's going to be a different way of working and um, and I'm just going to sort of have to trust that you know the cinematographer and the camera operators know what they're doing and they're going to tell me if something went drastically wrong and we need to go again and so it's just um, it was a much more of a kind of performance centered um, production process um, so so yeah, and and improvise the part about her dead arms getting cut off. No, that was <laughs> like really authentic. Like, <laughs> those arms are gonna get amputated. Like it seems uh -huh. like almost you know I thought that was really like nicely um, slipped in there. It was such a surprise. Yeah, no, that was that was definitely part of the script. <laughs> um, but I mean, I think that w something that's so great about Maria is that she's just one of those people that's just so in the moment and. Um, just so kind of grounded in character that she's never, you, you never catch her trying to kind of play something up for the humor of it, which I think makes it even funnier that it's just, I don't know, she's just not afraid to be deadpan or dark and for people not to get it. <laughs> and like, and I think that that's kind of rare and that a lot of people feel like they need to kind of spoon feed the humor and okay. she's it's sort of the complete opposite of that. Sort of like this is what it is, and either you're in, you're all, you're with me or you're not, and it doesn't matter because that's what happened, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so she was really great to work with, actually. I guess I have another question. So if you're doing this like improv-based approach, mm -hmm. does that mean um, like extra rehearsals? Uh, you know, is that a lot more rehearsing on this film maybe than your first one, or is it? Or was it more of just like, just really being in that moment? Yeah, I mean, I, I think there was probably the same amount of rehearsal, but the difference was that, um, <clears throat> you know, I think with, with Brother to Brother, I was much more um, obsessed <laughs> and controlling in terms of the script and you know, having belabored over the script for so long and just being like, I remember literally saying like, it, it's, it's a, uh, not the, right. to an actor. <laughs> and I'm just being like, okay. <laughs> and like, you know, and just that, that kind of um, approach, I think really, um, it, it sort of closes the door to a certain kind of um, collaboration or, you know, input of ideas for an actor, you know, they just, they're like, okay, you have it the way that you want it and you clearly want it, like, it's uh, not the, <laughs> like, I, like, I gotta get it right. And so, so it's just interesting. Um, I feel like we did rehearse a lot and we did do some improvisation in rehearsal on Brother to Brother, but I was very, very kind of stuck to the text because also because so much of it was um, based in historical research um, where with this, um, you know, I think that there was much more um, r improvisation, both in, in the rehearsal, but then also on set, where, you know, specific scenes, um, and, and some of it was just, you know, specifically circumstance. Um, you know, one instance would be, you know, Marcus was supposed to pick Aaron up from um, the restaurant after his shift, and and uh, the actor had a play that he was contracted to do and we couldn't get him for another day. And so he couldn't be at that location. And so I was like, what are we gonna do to sort of make this transition between um, you know, Aaron at work and then him and Marcus in the park. And then, so I came up with this idea of him and Neil counting tips and you know, this kind of backstory of Neil's dating and um, different patterns and you know and, and so that was literally just like uh, on this sheet it would be a, you know a fact-based improvisation where I'm literally just putting out two or three facts where it's literally like okay Neil is um, uh, you know go, is going on this series of dates and he's not 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 giving himself the opportunity to be in a relationship and he's very um, critical very quickly 
and, and, and it's sort of a pattern that, that Aaron observes, and Aaron is making a lot more money in tips because Neil thinks that he's more flirtatious with the customers. And those are sort of the facts of like what ha is happening, and you guys can feel free to make it up, and we'll have two cameras, and you know, we'll do two takes, and, and see what happens. Yeah. And so then that's, that's that scene in the movie. Great. Yeah, so it's interesting. Hey, hi Steven. How are you? Happy New Year. Sure. Um, so I know that you come from an editing background, mm -hmm. and when we met, we talked a little bit about like being a film soul freak. So I want to talk about like the first film or I guess double shooting, and just try to compare like that final script that I thought was like perfect versus like what goes on when you're actually shooting, all these compromises that you have to make. Mm -hmm. um, Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about that process? Yeah, no, I mean, that's a great question. And, um, I, you know, I think that um, that's a little bit what I was getting at in terms of um, <clears throat> the, the differences between brother to brother and the happy sad, and that, that I feel like um, with this, I, I sort of let myself um, go a little bit more and was much more kind of open to what the actors were doing in front of the camera as opposed to this fixed ideal of the movie that I wanted to make and them kind of meeting the standards of whatever that goal was. And so I think that um, with me a lot of times it's, it's actually letting the script go and actually seeing what happens and going through the takes and really kind of marking the things that, um, that I find um, emotionally moving or you know literally just like starring the the preferred takes and literally taking notes on the parts of specific takes that that have moved me in some way and whatever that kind of raw instinctual response is kind of remembering that and then kind of including those things in the cut but for me it it's always about a kind of separation from the script and it's 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 just like a different thing and you know there's that whole um saying of, of films being written three times on the script in the script stage in production and then in the editing room and, and i do think that that's true and um you know and then i think that I, you know i have collaborated with an editor on both features and so that's also what i get from an editor is that she's much less precious about um, you know, the, the five hours that it took to get this, this, yeah, she's just like, you know what, this scene just repeats what happened three scenes ago, and it's just not necessary, and I'm just going to take it out, and if you miss it, we can put it back later, and it's going, <laughs> and like, and that just becomes part of the dialogue, and, um, and so, yeah, I, I think it's, you know, part of, part of it is sort of letting go and kind of seeing the bigger picture. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's usually um, separating from the script, I think, and, and, you know, and really seeing what happened and um, kind of making peace with the differences between the script and, and what happened. And, and you know, really re kind of recognizing the power of, of things that happened, you know. And so sometimes I think people can be so fixated on what they thought the movie was going to be because they had that movie playing in their head for so long that they can then become blind to the power of things that did happen. If that makes sense? No, it makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that that happens a lot, actually. Yeah. Okay. I have another question. Do you have another question? Okay. We have like three minutes. <laughs> Uh-huh. I feel like that's a longer discussion, Stephen. <laughs> that's for our next meeting. <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's literally like, um, and so, I should say that, that um, a lot of these um, 
different types of improvisations are from this book called Directing Actors by Judith Weston, and which I found, find a really valuable book in terms of just the shaping of performances and um, the director-actor relationship and, and ways of working with actors and ways of giving direction um, in terms that are playable and like useful to actors. And so, um, you know, so uh, she talks about a lot of different tools in that book of just like, you know, sometimes it's, you know, the facts or it's, it's objectives or it's asking questions or it's, you know, an image or it's, you know, it's whatever tool actually, you know, kind of gets you to, gets the actor to where they need to be for the scene. And so you, so you, you, you try, you know, one thing at a time and sort of see the impact that it has. And if that doesn't work, you sort of go somewhere else. Um, but that's, you know, it's, a, it's actually a little bit of an extension of the conversation that we had in our first meeting of, of the differences between working with like trained actors and a non-actor is that the non-actor, if they're very close to the character, can, can kind of believably do that. But once you start asking them to do something um, that they don't have the instrument or the training to do, then it becomes more difficult in terms of like, you know, um, most trained actors have gone through that process and they, know, they have tools that they rely on and they can, you know, understand the kind of direction that, that you're giving them and absorb it into something that's playable for that situation. Well, I think for a non-actor, it's probably, it's, it is harder to do that. And so, um, just out of curiosity, was this a non-actor that you were having? No, uh, is, is with the trained actor, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of times those are things, um, you know, that you smoke out in the casting process, you know, and then, um, you know, and then obviously in the editing process, then the, those are decisions that need to get made in terms of like, you know, are there ways of shaping the scene around that? Is, is he the heart of the scene? Or is the heart of the scene the other character? You know, is, do you play more of the scene on the other character? And is it, you know, it, it, is it, you know, often, you know, so much of, um, so much that I think about editing is, is you know, the power of, of someone listening and of seeing someone listening and how they react to words and sort of so using that power and you know just ways of like shaping a performance in the edit um, you know become crucial in in um, situations like that and then if it doesn't work it just you cut it out <laughs> you know it's just it's one of those like kill your darlings yeah. moment as well okay well thank you Rodney I wish you had more time yeah but, um, thank you